Jumbo has been a, an amazing ambassador for our community. People come from all over to see him, and there's no doubt in my mind that Jumbo is a Jumbo draw for the City of St. Thomas. And I always like to point out as well too to people that take the map of Ontario and you turn the map of Ontario 90 degrees and southwestern Ontario looks like an elephant. Its trunk is in Windsor, its tail is in Tobamori, its one leg goes down to Long Point and its heart is in St. Thomas. St. Thomas, the home of Jumbo the Elephant. Jumbo was born in Africa in 1861 and at a young age went to the Paris Zoo. He spent a couple years in the Paris Zoo and then in 1865 he was traded for a rhinoceros to the London Zoological Gardens. And Jumbo was very famous and very well known at the London Zoological Gardens. And in 1882, P.T. Barnum, the circus entrepreneur, purchased Jumbo. There was a huge uproar in the United Kingdom. The Queen Victoria, Parliament, citizens of all, all ages were extremely upset. But Barnum persisted and in 1882, Jumbo arrived in New York City. He became the instant star of P.T. Barnum's circus. And from 1882 to 1885, the circus traveled all over North America, Jumbo traveling in a special palace car. The circus was extremely popular amongst all the citizens, and people flocked to see this large Jumbo the Elephant. On the 15th of September, 1885, that fateful night, the circus ended, and 31 elephants were loaded onto their cars. There were two straggler elephants, Jumbo and a small dwarf elephant by the name of Tom Thumb. And as they were walking along the railway tracks, uh, an unscheduled freight train suddenly appeared in the east. His trainer, Matthew Scott, tried to encourage Jumbo and a smaller dwarf elephant, Tom Thumb, to go into a ditch, but the elephants refused. And the train, unfortunately, overtook both elephants, striking the small elephant first and throwing him into a ditch and breaking his leg. It then, it then overtook Jumbo and uh, struck Jumbo in the rear. Uh, contrary to what P.T. Barnum liked to say of Jumbo saving the small elephant and charging the train, that wasn't the case. And um, unfortunately, Jumbo uh, succumbed to his injuries. Scott weeped profusely. And there is that story that Jumbo did wrap his, uh, his trunk around him and, uh, and bid him farewell. P.T. Barnum was wired immediately and uh, he knew that uh, he had lost his star attraction. Barnum, though, ever being the entrepreneur, thought of a way to continue to make money off of Jumbo. So he engaged a gentleman by the name of Henry Ward, who was a taxidermist in Rochester, New York. And Ward was dispatched to St. Thomas. And Jumbo's uh, skin was removed, and he was later stuffed and sent to Tufts University just outside of Boston. And his bones were mounted, and they're still on display in the Museum of Natural History in New York City. So uh, even for a couple years after Jumbo's death, the uh, what they like to call double jumbo traveled with the circus. So soon after Jumbo's death in 1885, there was actually talk about uh, erecting a monument in memory of Jumbo and that idea passed and then 50 years later in 1935 as they celebrated the 50th anniversary, there was also some talk again. Leading up to the 100th anniversary in 1985, a group of citizens as well as the local Kiwanis Club banded together to say, look, let's commemorate the magnificent creature that Jumbo was. So the citizens and the Kiwanis Club uh, got together, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to have the Jumbo monument uh, brought to St. Thomas. They engaged a sculptor from New Brunswick by the name of Winston Bronham. Bronham was famous for his cement and steel sculptures. And this was actually the largest project that Bronham had ever undertaken. And in the summer of 1985, Jumbo arrived in St. Thomas in two pieces and was, was placed at the west end of St. Thomas where he still welcomes people to the city today. One of the questions that a lot of people ask when they come to St. Thomas is, why does Jumbo's rear end welcome me to the city? And uh, there is a reason, and that is in the Indian custom that uh, in order for an elephant to bring you good luck, the elephant should face the east. So Jumbo is facing the east in recognition of that uh, trying to bring good luck. It is amazing the number of people that have come to St. Thomas to have their photograph taken with them. I have seen wedding photos, family photos, family reunion photos. Children, adults, everyone is just so thrilled to come and see that monument and have their photograph taken with them. He's really become a, a, a jumbo tourist draw for the city.